Good evening. This is All India Radio. I'm Anuja Kumar and with me is Aditi Lumba with the evening news. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds bilateral talks with President of United Arab Emirates Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan at Abu Dhabi. Both leaders reiterate commitment to further deepen and diversify India-UAE comprehensive strategic partnership. India assures world community of its commitment to protect at least 30% of lands, waters and oceans and adhere to its commitment of 30 by 30 by 2030 in UN Ocean Conference at Lisbon. Government launches e-learning portal Dark Karmyogi to enhance competency of about 4 lakh Grameen Dark Sevaks and departmental employees. In Jammu and Kashmir, annual Sri Amarnath Ji Yatra to commence from Thursday. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu and Prime Minister pay tributes to former Prime Minister P.V. Narsimha Rao on his birth anniversary today. In Maharashtra, the death toll in the building collapse rises to 17. Rescue operation underway. Sri Lankan cabinet grants to open fuel imports and retail sales market to companies from oil exporting nations. At Wimbledon, Rafael Nadal and Stefanos Tsitsipas to be seen in action tonight and in cricket. Second and final T20 international match between India and Ireland underway in Dublin at 9 p.m. And now the news in detail. Prime Minister Narendra Modi held bilateral talks with President of United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, at Abu Dhabi today. Both leaders reiterated their commitment to further deepen and diversify the India-UAE Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. The Prime Minister has implained for Delhi after concluding his visit to the UAE. Earlier, Mr. Modi reached Abu Dhabi this afternoon after attending the G7 summit in Germany. He was received by the President of UAE. The Prime Minister said he was touched by the special gesture of Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan of welcoming him at the Abu Dhabi airport. Mr. Modi conveyed his personal condolences on the passing away of Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan last month to President Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan and other royal family members. The Prime Minister also congratulated Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan on his election as the third President of the UAE and becoming the ruler of Abu Dhabi. Earlier in a tweet, Mr. Modi said he had a productive visit to Germany in which he attended the G7 summit, interacted with several world leaders and participated in a memorable community program in Munich. He added that the leaders were able to discuss many issues aimed at furthering global well-being and prosperity. Home Minister Amit Shah today said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has entrusted the responsibility of contributing to the prosperity and economic upliftment of the country to the cooperative sector. He was addressing the 70th AGM of the Gujarat State Cooperative Agriculture and Rural Development Bank Limited in Ahmedabad through video conferencing. The minister said India is celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav and will celebrate the centenary of independence after 25 years. He emphasized that the Prime Minister has placed the resolve of Sahkar Se Samriddhi before the nation. Mr. Shah added, due to reforms in the banking sector, citizens are receiving benefits of banking services. India today assured the world community that it is committed to protect at least 30% of lands, waters and oceans and adhere to its commitment of 30 by 30 by 2030. Delivering the India Statement at the UN Ocean Conference at Lisbon, Minister for Earth Sciences Dr. Jitendra Singh said that under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, all efforts are going on to achieve the 30 by 30 target in a mission mode as per the COP resolutions. He said he is at the UN Forum to present Mr. Modi's vision for conservation and sustenance of ocean and ocean resources before the world. Our correspondent reports that India joined the High Ambition Coalition for Nature and People, which was initiated at the One Planet Summit in Paris in January last year. The coalition aims to promote an international agreement to protect at least 30% of the world's land and ocean by 2030. 
Dark's Karm Yogi, an e-learning portal of the Department of Post, was launched by Communications Minister Ashwini Vaishnav and MOS Communications Deva Singh Chauhan in Delhi today. This portal has been developed under vision of Mission Karm Yogi, which was conceptualized by Prime Minister Narendra Modi to bring efficiency in actions of all government employees. Dark Karm Yogi portal will enhance the competencies of about 4 lakh Grameen Dark Savers and departmental employees. Education and Skill Development Minister Dharmendra Pradhan today stressed the need to adopt innovative and out-of-box methods to enhance access to quality and affordable education. Addressing the India Today Education Conclave, Mr. Pradhan spoke about the need to bring India's vast population under the formal education and certified skills structure. A three-day Chintan Bethak of Ministry of Ports, Shipping and Waterways concluded today with some remarkable decisions. The Bethak was organized with an aim to discuss and deliberate ideas and innovations that can propel India's blue economy. It was chaired by Shipping Minister Sarvanan Sonowal. Speaking on the occasion, Mr. Sonowal reiterated Prime Minister Narendra Modi's vision to develop and promote India's blue economy. Chemical and Fertilizers Minister Dr. Mansook Mandavia chaired the meeting for planning of upcoming 12th edition of India Chem 2022 in New Delhi today. Theme of this year's edition is Vision 2030 Chem and Petrochemicals Build India. During the meeting, Mr. Mandavia said, this event will showcase tremendous potential and support of government policy for sustainable growth in the sector. He said it will also provide a platform for domestic and international investors and other stakeholders to interact and forge alliances to further strengthen Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Make in India, Make for the World mission. Dr. Mandavi also launched the brochure for the 12th edition of India Chem 2022. Minister of State for Chemicals and Fertilizers, Bhagwan Kuba, and Secretary Arti Ahuja, along with members from FIKI and senior officials of the ministry, were also present in the meeting. The centre has advised caution and continuous alertness to states reporting a surge in COVID cases during the past few weeks and to step up vigil against COVID. Health Secretary Rajesh Bhushan reviewed the status of COVID situation through a video conference with 14 such states that are reporting high number of cases on a week-to-week -week basis along with increased case positivity combined with low numbers of COVID tests and below average COVID vaccination. Member Health of Niti Aayog, Dr. Vinod Paul, was also present at the review meeting. Dr. Paul advised states that have been reporting spike in COVID cases to be watchful of the emerging pandemic situation. He stressed that the major action point is to focus on strengthening proactive surveillance as per the revised surveillance strategy issued by Union Health Ministry on the 9th of June. He said routine surveillance constitutes the steel frame of COVID response and management strategy and needs continuous and unstinted attention. Over 197 crore 31 lakh vaccine doses have been administered so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. The health ministry said over 19 lakh 21 thousand doses were administered yesterday. The recovery rate is currently at 98.57%. In Maharashtra, the political uncertainty continues even after a week since rebel leader Eknath Shinde, along with other MLAs, revolted against the party leadership to form a separate faction. However, Shiv Sena chief Uddhav Thakre, who had adopted an aggressive stance against these MLAs during a National Executive Committee meeting of his party, last week is now seen playing an emotional card for the MLAs to return to the party fold. More in this report from our correspondent. As the time is slipping off from the hands of Shiv Sena leader Uddhav Thakre to save his government, he exhorted the rebel MLAs to sit across the table face to face with him and speak their mind out. He told the MLAs that still the time has not gone and cautioned them on falling prey to any bluffs. On Uddhav's claim that some MLAs who are camping in Guwahati are in touch with him, Eknath Shinde challenged him to reveal those names. Shinde, in his latest tweet aimed at Uddhav, strongly objected to the derogatory remarks made by Aditya Thakre and party spokesperson Sanjay Raut in last one week. Calling Mahavikas Aghadi anti-Hindu, he sought to know that how the Sena leader can exhort these MLAs to save the state government. Meanwhile, State Home Minister Dilip Varse Patil said that no discussion was held on the current political situation in today's cabinet meeting. Kunal Shinde, AIR News, Mumbai. 
Maharashtra leader of opposition in the Legislative Council, Praveen Darekar, claimed that hundreds of government resolutions issued by various departments of the Mahavikas Agari government in the state have not yet uploaded on the government's website. Addressing a press conference in Mumbai today, Mr. Darekar informed that the proposals are worth thousands of crore rupees. Making a serious allegation against the MBA government, Mr. Darekar said that the government is afraid of getting exposed of its malpractices if the GR is published on the government's website. He informed that the Mahavikas Agari government has issued a total of 443 GRs from 32 departments between 17th and 27th of June this year. He added that around 160 GRs had been issued in a single day. He alleged that these GRs have been hastily drawn out in the interest of some people. Also, he said it is not appropriate to take such a decision when there is a political instability in the state and the government is in minority. Meanwhile, Maharashtra Governor Bhagat Singh Koshyari has asked the state Chief Secretary to provide complete information of all the government resolutions and circulars issued by the state government from the 22nd to 24th of June. The direction by the Governor to the Maharashtra government comes after leader of the opposition in Legislative Council Praveen Darekar raised the issue a couple of days ago and had sought Mr. Koshyari's intervention. Meanwhile, hectic parlays of ruling parties is on in Mumbai, as well as in Guwahati by the rebel group led by Eknath Shinde. Eknath Shinde said that he will soon return to Mumbai. Talking to reporters at the hotel in Guwahati, Shinde said he and other MLAs will return to Mumbai at the earliest. He said the information on the stand of the faction will be given by Deepa Kesarkar, who is their spokesperson. The BJP today criticized Congress after the Supreme Court dismissed a plea filed by Zakia Jafri challenging the clean shit given by the SIT to the then Gujarat Chief Minister Narendra Modi over 2002 Gujarat riots. Talking to media in New Delhi, party spokesperson Gaurav Bhatia said a landmark judgment was delivered by the Apex Court in which some comments were made that exposed the real character of some people. He said the court had named Tista Setalwad, who was working to end the political innings of Mr. Modi. He alleged that Tista Setalwad was only what he called a small branch of spreading communal hatred, and its headquarters is in the Congress Party. Zakia Jafri ne jo sarvot nyalle me ek yachika prastut kari thi, usko kharaj kiya. Lekin kuch tipriya jo kari gayi, uske baad khud ko jo manav adhikar hai, uski raksha karne ka. ठेका लेके बैठे कुछ लोग और उनका असली चरित्र सामने आया टू कीप द पॉट बॉइलिंग ऑब्वियसली फॉर अल्टीरियर डिजाइन एज अ मैटर ऑफ फैक्ट ऑल दो इन्वॉल्व इन सच एब्यूज ऑफ प्रोसेस नीड टू बी इन द डॉक एंड प्रोसीडेड विद इन अकॉर्डेंस विद लॉ यू लिस्निंग टू द इवनिंग न्यूज इन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो रिमाइंडर ऑफ द हेडलाइंस बिफोर वी मूव ऑन Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds bilateral talks with President of United Arab Emirates, Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, at Abu Dhabi. Both leaders reiterate commitment to further deepen and diversify India-UAE comprehensive strategic partnership. India assures world community of its commitment to protect at least 30% of lands, waters and oceans and adhere to its commitment of 30 by 30 by 2030 in UN Ocean Conference at Lisbon, Government launches e-learning portal Dark Karmyogi to enhance competency of about 4 lakh Grameen Dark Sevaks and departmental employees. In Jammu and Kashmir, annual Sri Amarnath Ji Yatra to commence from Thursday. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu and Prime Minister pay tributes to former Prime Minister P. V. Narsimha Rao on his birth anniversary today. In Maharashtra, the death toll in the building collapse rises to 17, rescue operation underway. Sri Lankan cabinet grants to open fuel imports and retail sales market to companies from oil exporting nations. In Wimbledon tennis tournament, the match between Rafael Nadal and Francisco Serendulo is underway at the centre court and in cricket, second and final T20 international match between India and Ireland to start in a short while, India wins toss and opted to bat. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alert. अपने बिजनेस को बढ़ाने के लिए लीजिए आकाशवाणी का सहयोग और दीजिए उसे बुलंदियों के पंख आपका बिजनेस लोकल है या राष्ट्रीय आकाशवाणी देती है उपभोक्ताओं तक पहुंचने का हर विकल्प और अब तो आप घर दफ्तर या दुकान पर बैठे बैठे कर सकते हैं आकाशवाणी के किसी भी केंद्र के लिए विज्ञापनों की बुकिंग आकाशवाणी के विभिन्न चैनलों आरोप विज्ञापन देना 
सुलभ और सस्ता बुकिंग है तो संपर्क करें आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो पर आठ सात शून्य 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 एक चार दो चार दो क्या आप कम्पिटेटिव एग्जाम्स की तैयारी कर रहे हैं आपके लिए ऑल इंडिया रेडियो लाया है प्रोग्राम अभ्यास एक ऐसा कार्यक्रम जहां हमें आप प्रश्न भेजते हैं व्हाट्सएप नंबर नाइन टू एट नाइन जीरो नाइन फोर जीरो डबल फोर पर या फिर ईमेल करते हैं अभ्यास डॉट ए आई आर न्यूज एट जी मेल डॉट कॉम पर और हमारे एक्सपर्ट देते हैं आपके प्रश्नों के उत्तर हर शनिवार रात साढ़े नौ बजे इस वर्ग का विषय है आधुनिक इतिहास यानी की मॉडर्न हिस्ट्री और आपके सवाल प्राप्त करने की अंतिम तारीख ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ जून आपका अभ्यास हमारा प्रयास Welcome back to the evening news on All India Radio. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will participate in the Udyami Bharat program in New Delhi on the 30th of this month. During the event, the Prime Minister will launch the Raising and Accelerating MSME Performance Scheme, Capacity Building of First Time MSME Exporters Scheme, and new features of the Prime Minister's Employment Generation Program (PMEGP). The Prime Minister will also digitally transfer assistance to beneficiaries of PMEGP for 2022-23. He will announce results of MSME Idea Hackathon 2022 and distribute national MSME awards. Mr. Modi will also issue digital equity certificates to 75 MSMEs in the Self-Reliant India Fund. Udyami Bharat is reflective of the continuous commitment of the government right from day 1 to work towards empowerment of msmes the government has launched several initiatives from time to time like mudra yojana emergency credit line guarantee scheme and scheme of fund for regeneration of traditional industries this has been done to provide necessary and timely support to the msme sector which has helped benefit crores of people across the country Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation is celebrating Azadi Ka Amrit Mahotsav week by organizing a series of activities as a part of the celebrations the ministry organized a half day seminar today in hybrid mode on the topic data for sustainable development india's environmental accounts and its role in policy and decision making the seminar intends to provide an accelerated push towards valuing nature and using these values in the global and national statistics aligning with the international statistical standard system of environment economic accounts framework students from shimla who are in kochi as part of azadi ka amrit mahotsav ek bharat shreshth bharat initiative of the union government today visited the hill palace museum at tripunithura at this afternoon The palace which was once belonged to rajas of Kochi currently houses the biggest archaeological museum in the state. The students also visited the Sri Purnathariyasa temple in Tirupurinthura. Earlier the students were introduced to the rich cultural heritage of the stage through a video presentation. Most students who were visiting Kerala for the first time were brimming with anxiety and joy as they left the host institution for exploring the new places. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla along with the Minister for Road Transport and Highways Nitin Gadkari gave away National Highways Excellence Award 2021 to the stakeholders and companies engaged in the highway construction and maintenance of road assets in New Delhi this evening. These excellence awards were con- constituted in 2018 with an aim to incentivize stakeholders in the highway construction and maintenance process and to create a spirit of healthy competitiveness amongst them speaking on the occasion the lok sabha speaker said because of frequent actions and extraordinary works by road transport and highways ministry in road and highway construction people's faith in the government has increased he said india will touch new heights in terms of road connectivity and road infrastructure in times to come इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के क्षेत्र के अंदर जिस तरीके से भारत ने नई गति दी है आने वाले समय के अंदर हम ये कह सकते हैं कि दुनिया के अंदर इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के क्षेत्र के अंदर भारत एक कीर्तिमान हासिल करेगा और निश्चित रूप से उसी दिशा के अंदर कि जितने भी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर के सेक्टर हैं उन सेक्टर को एक प्लेटफॉर्म पर लाया जाए और इसलिए पीएम गतिशक्ति मास्टर प्लान योजना बनाई गई In his address Mr Gadkari said along with road infrastructure there is a need to think about road safety and enhancing greenery on the road sides 
He expressed hope that Indian roads will be of American standard by 2024 with the speed in which NHAI and its ministry are working with. A correspondent reports that around 122 nominations were received, of which 30 final nominations were selected for these awards. Minister of State for Road Transport and Highways Dr. V.K. Singh was also present in the event. Union Minister for Finance and Corporate Affairs Srimati Nirmala Sitaraman today chaired the 47th GST Council meeting in Chandigarh. Our correspondent reports that on the beginning day of the two-day meeting today, the interim report on rate rationalization submitted by the group of ministers was accepted by the council. The representatives of all states and UTs attended the meeting. The state governments have asked for continuation of GST compensation after the 30th of June and are hopeful of a positive response on their request. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman will address the media tomorrow. News just in, COVID vaccination coverage has crossed 197 crore 44 lakh so far under the nationwide vaccination drive. More than 11 lakh vaccine doses were administered today. Vice President M. Venkaiya Naidu and Prime Minister Narendra Modi today paid tributes to former Prime Minister P. V. Narsimha Rao on his birth anniversary. In a tweet, Mr. Naidu said, a visionary statesman and a towering intellectual, P. V. Narsimha Rao ushered a major economic reform. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, India is grateful to him for his rich contribution to national progress. He added that the former Prime Minister also made a mark as a great scholar and intellectual. In Jammu and Kashmir, the annual Sri Amarnathji Yatra will commence from 30th of this month. Elaborate security and other necessary arrangements have been finalized for the smooth conduct of the Yatra this year. Commissioner Secretary Floriculture, Sheikh Fayaz and Secretary Tourism, Sarmad Hafiz today visited Sonmark in Gandharbal district and reviewed the arrangements put in place by the government departments and service providers for the smooth conduct of the forthcoming Sri Amarnathji Yatra scheduled to commence from Thursday. Appreciating the gesture of the service providers, the two secretaries said, this is ingrained in the ethos of the local people who have been welcoming tourists and yatris with open arms for long. In Maharashtra, the death toll in the building collapse at Kurla's Nayak Nagar in Mumbai has risen to 17. The BMC said the injured people are being treated at Rajavari and Sion Hospital. The four-story building collapsed last night. As many as 13 people have sustained injury in the incident. According to the official, the rescue operation is still underway. Maharashtra Minister Subhash Desai said an ex-gratia of 5 lakh rupees will be given to the family of the deceased and the injured will be given free treatment. In Maharashtra, four people lost their lives after a helicopter belonging to the Oil and Natural Gas Corporation, ONGC, made a controlled emergency landing at sea near the Sagar Kiran oil rig located some 50 nautical miles from the Mumbai coast today. According to ONGC press release, of the nine people on board, including two pilots, they were safely rescued by teams of Indian Coast Guard and Indian Navy. Four of those rescued, however, succumbed after they were shifted to a private hospital in Mumbai. The press release stated that detailed probe of the incident has been ordered. The Sri Lankan cabinet today granted to open fuel imports and retail sales market to companies from oil exporting nations. This comes after the country ran out of fuel as only 1,100 tons of petrol and 7,500 tons of diesel are left, which are not sufficient to last for a day. Power and Energy Minister Kanchan Vijay Sekra said that the companies will be selected upon their ability to import fuel and operate without forex requirements, reports of Sri Lankan Daily. He said the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation will be the service provider for logistics, stocking and distribution with a service fee levied from those companies. In United States, at least 50 people were found dead in an abandoned truck on the outskirts of San Antonio, Texas. It is believed to be the worst recent case of migrant deaths due to smuggling in the U.S. Mexico's foreign minister confirmed 22 Mexicans, 7 Guatemalans and 2 Hondurans are among the dead. 16 people, including 4 children, were taken to the hospital. Three people are being held in custody and the investigation has been handed over to the federal agents. Mexico's foreign minister Marcelo Ebrard said today that it had joined the investigation. 
On the second day of Wimbledon tennis tournament, the match between Rafael Nadal and Francisco Serendulo is underway at the center court. The women's singles competition will see an encounter between Harmony Tan and 23-time Grand Slam champion Serena Williams later this evening. In earlier match, top seed Aiga Swiatek defeated Jana Fett in straight sets by 6-0-6-3 six six in the first round. In cricket, the second and final T20 international match between India and Ireland will start in a short while from now in Dublin. India have won the toss and opted to bat first. India defeated hosts Ireland on Sunday by seven wickets in the rain-interrupted opening encounter of the two-match series. The two-match series will act as a dress rehearsal for India's tour to England starting from 1st of July. The Sensex and the Nifty today ended almost flat. Both stock indices added marginally amid positive global cues. A report from the business test. Sensex at the Bombay Stock Exchange rose by 16 points to finish at 53,177. Nifty at the National Stock Exchange also added 18 points to settle at 15,850. In the foreign exchange market, the rupee weakened by 44 pesos against the US dollar. The domestic currency closed at 78 rupees and 79 pesos against the American unit. Gold was trading at 50,925 rupees per 10 grams. Silver prices also climbed 525 rupees to 60,470. 70 rupees per kilogram and in intraday Brent crude was trading at $116.75 per barrel. Arjun Chaudhary for AIR News. Now let us have a look at the weather forecast for tomorrow. National capital Delhi is expected to have a generally cloudy sky with moderate rain. Minimum temperature will be around 30 degrees Celsius while the maximum will be 42 degrees. Mumbai will have a generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. Minimum temperature will be 26 degrees Celsius and maximum will be 29 degrees. Kolkata will have generally cloudy sky with light rain. Minimum temperature will be around 27 degrees Celsius and maximum will be 33 degrees. Chennai will have a generally cloudy sky with light rain or drizzle. Minimum temperature will be 26 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 35 degrees. Srinagar is expected to have a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. The minimum temperature will be around 19 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 33 degrees. Jammu and Muzaffarabad will have a mainly clear sky, becoming partly cloudy towards evening or night. Leh will have a mainly clear sky, while Gilgit will have a partly cloudy sky. Hyderabad, Bengaluru and Tiruvannathpuram will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers. In the northeast, Guwahati, Imphal, Aizol, Shillong, Itanagar and Kohima will have a generally cloudy sky with one or two spells of rain or thunder showers, while Gangtok will have generally cloudy sky with heavy rain. And now, before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi holds bilateral talks with President of United Arab Emirates Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan at Abu Dhabi. Both leaders reiterate commitment to further deepen and diversify India-UAE Comprehensive Strategic Partnership. India assures world community of its commitment to protect at least 30% of lands, waters and oceans and adhere to its commitment of 30 by 30 by 2030 in UN Ocean Conference at Lisbon. Government launches e-learning portal Dark Karm Yogi to enhance competency of about 4 lakh Grameen Dark Sevaks and departmental employees. In Jammu and Kashmir, annual Sri Amarnath Ji Yatra to commence from Thursday. Vice President M. Venkaya Naidu and Prime Minister pay tributes to former Prime Minister P.V. Narsimha Rao on his birth anniversary today. In Maharashtra, the death toll in the building collapse rises to 17, rescue operation underway. Sri Lankan cabinet grants to open fuel imports and retail sales market to companies from oil exporting nations. At Wimbledon, Rafael Nadal and Stefano Tsitsipas to be seen in action tonight. And in cricket, second and final T20 international match between India and Ireland underway in Dublin at 9 p.m. For details of these stories and more, log on to our website www.newsonair.gov.in and News on AIR app. And with that, 
We end the evening news. Good night.